Hey, so welcome back to my shop. It's been a crazy couple weeks. I know I haven't posted a video in a while, but uh, my spare time here the last few weeks before Christmas, I've been making some gifts for some family. And they watch my channel, at least I hope they do, and we didn't want to spoil the surprise. So now that Christmas is over, I got the green light to post the video of building that stuff. Anyway, uh, today's video is mostly about building toys. Uh, <laughs> I decided to make toys this year for, for, for everybody that I could. I thought it would be fun. And it's mostly about this maze that I made, uh, a double-sided ball bearing marble maze, you want to call it. It turned out pretty cool. And that's mostly done here in the CNC machine. Uh, that's why I want to highlight that in particular. I made a few other things too, uh, while I was kind of multitasking while the uh, machine was running. And I'm going to show you some of that stuff too. But I wanted to take a word and talk about the next video coming up. It's going to be about vacuum fixturing or vacuum clamping, which is quite a different concept than the other vacuum table you may have seen my video of. Um, so that's going to be coming up in the next week, week and a half. So please, you know, if you want to see that, you know, subscribe and you'll be notified when that gets uploaded. So anyway, let's get to it. The design process for the maze was actually quite involved. And I began by going online and finding this uh, maze generator program. It was totally free. And you could generate a maze based on some parameters that you put in. And if you didn't like them, you could create a new maze like that. The red line you see there is the solution to the maze. So anyway, uh, once I uh, got a maze I liked, uh, you can download it and you could either download a PDF or SVG file. I just decided to stick with the PDF because I knew I could import it into my AutoCAD. Okay, here you see AutoCAD where I imported the maze. And this is what came in. It's a PDF underlay, it's called. It's not really a real item. It's more like just a bitmap image. So you can see the maze here is just a simple line drawing. So what I needed to do was I needed to scale it appropriately to be just the size I wanted, which in this case was like 17 inches roughly for the maze. And I basically generated uh, my own maze by drawing all these lines. And I used, I just followed the pattern that the PDF supplied and basically hand drew it all. So what you see here, these lines are the vectors that get exported into VCarve. And here would be a completed version of the vectors. Here would be the side, uh, we'll call it side A or the top side. And over here is side B right here. Um, this orange line is the outside of the pine wood blank that I'm using for the maze. And over here is the polycarbonate cover which has some holes in it. Um, there's also a simple cross section I, I drew just to establish some dimensions as far as the depth of the cut. Um, the grooves in the maze, uh, which you can see right here, there's the ball bearing, uh, are three eighths of an inch deep on both sides. And there is a quarter inch of stock left in between because the rough blank I'm using was one inch thick. So once that was done, these vectors were imported into VCarve to be toolpathed. Now you see we're in VCarve Pro. This is the CAM software I use to actually control the CNC router. And here are the vectors I imported from AutoCAD. These are the grooves for the maze. This is the outside shape of the maze, which I didn't really need to cut. It's just shown for reference here. This line here is the polycarbonate cover with its holes and here are the holes that go through to the other side and I'm only showing you one side here so I can turn all the tool paths on that were for this side these are the actual 
pass that the that the router will take you see all those little arrows uh, if you use this software you're familiar with this at any rate we can go on here and I can show you what it looks like the machine after it's routed out there you go that's the one side of the maze now let's get into building it okay so let me give you a rundown on what we're making here guys I'm making a ball bearing maze I've so far made two of them it's a two-sided maze and it's just made out of pine. I didn't want to get too crazy with, with the wood, but I created a file in AutoCAD for the, for the map of the maze, and I toolpathed it in V-Carve, and it is double-sided, and the maze is different. And the theory is, is that the ball bearing rolls around, and wherever you start, there's two holes, you start, say, here, and you got to make your way to the middle. It falls through to the other side. And then when it falls through, you flip it over, and you make your way back, blah, 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 to the other end, and it kind of just, you know, goes back and forth. And there will be a piece of uh, polycarbonate, Lexan, that is screwed to this surface to keep the ball bearing from falling out. And I'm not sure how I'm going to finish them yet, uh, whether I'm going to use some Minwax stain or just maybe some Danish oil or tongue oil. We'll see when I get them all done. I'll have to make up my mind then. But anyway, I wanted to show you the machining of the last one and the steps it takes. It's basically on, on the CNC, there's three, three steps. Um, I've already put, put stops here on the, the bed of the CNC that center this up. And my origin is right in the center of the piece. I've already established that on the first one I did. Then I put the stops on. So basically you set the blank in here and you clamp it down. And I'm not machining real close to the edge. <clears throat> so I can, I can actually use clamps. Don't need the vacuum table on this one. Wouldn't really be uh, the best method for this anyway. So right now, we just get it all clamped on. And if you're wondering what these, these, these are actually pre-made blanks that I just kind of come across at Home Depot, okay? I was there looking for some, just some supplies I needed. And I was walking down the aisle and I found them. I mean, they're just sitting there. There's some bigger than this and then there's this size. It's 17 and three quarters diameter, one inch thick. And it's got a nice sanded surface and a, and a, and a rounded bull-nosed edge. It's, it's perfect. Five bucks. How can you beat that? I was thinking of gluing up my own blank because, you know, it has to be, you know, almost 18, you know, 17, 18 inches for this maze to work. Uh, how can you beat this for five bucks? Uh, so I bought three of them, and there we go. I mean, that's what I'm using. One inch thick, 17 and three quarters. Anyway, so anyway, we're going to bring this back to the origin. <clears throat> and I'm using a quarter inch down cut spiral end mill. And real quick, we set the Z axis because the X and Y is already set. So we set the Z right to the top of the surface up, up just a hair. Come on, fast. There we go. We set our Z is zero. And we'll have to do that when we flip it over again. And then we can run the program. Now, there's three files to cut this. The first file is the grooves for the mace, which you'll see. The second file is just the two through holes that there are for the ball bearing to drop through. And then after that, we put a couple of pencil reference marks on here for center, and that's really just for the rotation to get it rotated right. And then I'll unclamp it, flip it over, line those pencil marks up with the pencil marks I have here on my stops, and then I'll run the third file, which is the grooves for the other side. 
and then it'll essentially be done. After that, we'll just uh, cut out the acrylic discs that are gonna screw on here to, to keep the ball bearing captive. And then of course, finish them. So we'll just go step by step here. We're ready to go on this. <clears throat> I'll show you the, the start of it and then we're gonna go into a sped up time lapse and we'll go from there. Uh, I've machined the other ones with the dust boot on, but I've taken it off so it would be a little clearer uh, for the video here. And just so you guys know, I'm eating dust for you. You show pretty. So it takes an hour per side to machine the grooves for the mace. It's 9.30 Wednesday night, the week before Christmas. So I have an hour and a half left. That's about halfway through. <laughs> Dinner, <laughs> late night in the shop. Washed down with some coffee. Hey, at least they're all vegetable. So that is the top side or side A. The maize grooves are done. Now I'm gonna run the second step program, which is the hole through here and a hole through here for the ball bearing to flip over on the other side. I have to mark this center line. which aligns it when I flip it over. And that's really for the rotation. So that this hole, when we flip this over, it'll be over here. And that groove, it, it can be off a little bit, but it can't be off too much. Okay, that's it for the second side. Another hour of machining. Uh, I have to say, it's, it's all, for all three mazes, it's gone really, really well. I probably could have cut them faster, had to, had to feed on the, on the machine faster, but I was afraid that I would, you know, blow more of those uh, end grain corners out. All three of these are cut, both sides. I might have to do just a touch of sanding. Uh, some of the, uh, the, the, the finish is great actually. I, I don't even know if I have to sand it, but I, I might hit a couple spots and they're ready for finishing. And I'm, about, I'm pretty much gonna call it a night here. It's about 10.30. Uh, tomorrow after work, I'll pick up on uh, cutting the polycarbonate covers for these, there'll be six of them. And I'm going to be doing the finishing for both these and the cornhole, mini cornhole games. And yeah, we'll pick up again tomorrow.